Hello, Ted. It's uh, really lovely for you to invite me, and I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to speak to you and to all your wonderful listeners. Well, thank you so much, Simon. You know, um, I, I love your integrity. I love your honesty, and I really found what you what you uh, what you've said before, uh, both at my conference and uh, I've I've seen you know, of course, your website and what you've written there to be absolutely fascinating, offering people around the world a completely different perspective on l- what life is out there beyond this planet. Yes, um, I'm sure I'm not the only person, Ted, but there are not very many who are prepared to go as public as as I did. And I can understand why, because the established media really turn on you. Mm-hmm. And for a number of years, they made my life uh, quite difficult. But when you know something of the magnitude that I experienced, mm-hmm. and you um, realize that many governments are not being fully truthful with their citizens, then you have to decide whether you just duck your head down and pretend it didn't happen, or whether you tell people in the hope that they'll do their own research and start to investigate for themselves. And I decided on the latter course that I was going to actually speak my truth and hopefully try and connect with some people. And I've been doing that for the last seven years now. Wonderful. Just wonderful, Simon. Now, we mentioned, we talked briefly on air, uh, off the air here a few minutes ago uh, about the, yesterday's vote in Britain about the European Union. Could you um, tell my listeners a little bit about that? I think that's a tremendous uh, event. It is. I mean, there are young people going around actually saying that they realize that they were alive during one of the um, life-changing events in Great Britain. Mm-hmm. Um, for American um, listeners in particular, uh, Europe is composed of a, a number of countries that all signed up to one sort of government. Mm-hmm. Um, and Great Britain never went the whole hog. We never took the same money. We didn't take the euro. We stayed with our British pound. Good. And yesterday we had a vote to decide whether we wanted to stay in the European U- Union or leave. Mm-hmm. And the elite of, uh, I think, the world expected Great Britain to stay in the European Union. But by a reasonable margin, we voted to leave and it has caused shockwaves. I'm very pleased I voted to leave because it holds up Agenda 21. That's the agenda good. that is not very good for, for people. Right. And it also holds up the one world government. So Great Britain has actually made a stand to take itself away from the corporate uh, countries and to be independent. So it's had a very big effect and our British Prime Minister has resigned. He uh, has really? resigned today. Yeah, oh, he's gone. He's going to, it's going to stay until October, and then he's leaving. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've got some huge changes occurring in this country. Um, and the reason for the vote, I believe, was partly um, the number of migrants, migrant workers coming in is very large, sure. and the indigenous population didn't like it. And secondly, there's a huge disconnect between ordinary, average, decent people and the super rich and the elite of this country Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that basically the ordinary people are no longer listening to the instructions they're being given by the rich and powerful Mm -hmm. so uh, we've got a a big change in this country so yeah it's been it's been a very busy day for us that's amazing that's amazing you know one thing I want to give you a compliment on your on your governmental system it's a parliamentary system of course in Britain but if we elect a bad president here in the United States, we have to stick with them for four years, of course, unless they get impeached like Richard Nixon. But usually we just have to stick it out. But um, with your system, David Ca- is it David Cameron, is that right, the, the prime minister? Yes. He yes. has to, he's decided to resign, which is just uh, amazing. Well, we, we, we do have a parliamentary system. <clears throat> we don't have a Bill of Rights as you guys do. Mm-hmm. But under the parliamentary system, um, the it would be like your Senate and your mm-hmm. Congress have mm-hmm. the right not to impeach, but basically they they go round privately and say to him, we don't support you anymore, and then he resigns. So it's a much more representative uh, action. So in other words, if you mm-hmm. have a the equivalent of a congressman, we would call it a member of parliament, mm-hmm. and he or she um, gets lots of phone calls from yeah. their constituents, they then have the power to go to the prime minister and say, I think you better go. They're amazing, just amazing. Well, um, one of the things you mentioned was One World Government and Agenda 21, and uh, I'd love to ask you just a few brief questions about that. 
Um, uh, for those who you, for those of you out, my listeners out there around the world who, who are not familiar with Agenda Twenty One, it's it's a system. It's 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 touted as a way for environmental protection, I think, and for for land use planning. But I think it's much more than that, isn't it? It's a way to control people, uh, Simon. From your from what you know. Yes, um, it was brought into operation uh, over twenty years ago. Um, very, very uh, under the under the blankets. Very done, very quietly. Mm-hmm. Um, part of Agenda Twenty One is the um, spraying of chemicals, the removal of vitamins, um, forcing vaccines onto people. Wow. Uh, Agenda Twenty One, in in my opinion, is a cover to weaken the human population, mm-hmm. um, and so it's a it's a very evil and nasty program, and something that um, you know I certainly will resist and i'm sure many others will as well are, are chemtrails part of the agenda 21 um a, a, a framework originally no um, mm-hmm. um uh, maybe some some listeners will remember the original george bush once talking about um global warming and saying it was nonsense and then obviously somebody had a word with him because the next day he said it's actually all true originally the idea for chemtrailing was um oh well, look i've got police cars going past and you would think i'm in america wouldn't you <laughs> <laughs> very very rare for this part of um, great britain i must tell you we get one police car a day here really um hmm. right uh the object if i go back to 1944 okay uh, the, the brits and and the the americans dropped little strips of tin foil and the, the project was called Operation Window mm-hmm. and it was designed to um, confuse German radar mm-hmm. so they understood a lot from that and what they were doing in the early stages was just literally dropping tiny pieces of aluminum mm-hmm. to reflect back the sun's light mm-hmm. uh, and when they realized that they could utilize ordinary commercial jet airliners mm-hmm. and um, they could spray chemicals from their exhausts Mm -hmm. then they started um, to use both viruses um, and um, bacteria Mm -hmm. and other chemicals but one of the off the other side shoots uh, not for what we would call uh, ET races but races Mm -hmm. that travel by portal technology so Mm -hmm. I would call those extra dimensional entities Mm -hmm. when they arrive into the atmosphere they open a portal and arrive it's very hard to detect them with standard radar Mm -hmm. but if you were to and we go back to operation window if you were to spray tiny pieces of aluminum into the atmosphere Mm -hmm. when a alien spacecraft enters and it creates a sort of a ripple into the atmosphere as it arrives mm-hmm. it all those tiny pieces of aluminum actually send back a signature onto a radar blip oh. so there, there are many reasons many ways they use chemtrailings to to um, weaken the humans through uh, chemical and uh, biological it's also this um to seed the atmosphere with uh, um, aluminum and there are many other ways there are many other reasons they use them so yeah it's uh, it's quite a nasty thing really Interesting. I know that uh, from my own experience, I lived for a number of 14 years in eastern Washington, which is about uh, 250 miles or so east of Seattle. And in that area where I was living up until 2014, the U.S. Navy was spraying chemtrails um, every every other day. And I had actually I had the uh, the air, uh, the water and the fish analyzed in the local area. And the aluminum rates were up to 10,000 times what they should be from background. Um, the sulfur rates were three to 4,000 times what they should be. The barium and strontium rates were thousands and thousands of times higher. And the kind of health effects that, sh- that you see in eastern Washington from that are dramatic rises in the rates of Alzheimer's disease, which is caused by aluminum, because the aluminum separates the two frontal lobes, the right and left lobes. Um, you also see a lot of stillbirths and infantile deaths from the strontium and barium. And uh, I sent the results. I had them tested by the University of Wisconsin, and then I sent the results to an environmental specialist back in Pennsylvania. And she told me that under U.S. Department of Labor um, regulations, if if that area, especially around Grant County, Moses Lake area, where the target of the of many much of the spring is, is done, um, if if that was a U.S. labor site, they'd have to shut it all down, evacuate everybody as being a hazardous waste site. Yeah, it's it's shocking Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's that just is very interesting because originally the aluminum wasn't used as a weapon it was used Mm -hmm. as a defensive um as i explained but then um other factions 
took over the chemtrailing and then used the aluminum. And as you said, it's very interesting because it divides the left and right hemispheres of the brain, which right. allows um, uh, scala waves then to be targeted into the left or the right brain. It's easier then to make people think they're hearing voices oh. or to um, give them... Um, uh, um, visions. So mm -hmm. by by breaking the left and the right, you actually fracture a person, and it's very useful for mind control technologies. So um, that is actually a, a, a byproduct of originally using aluminum to detect alien spacecraft. Amazing, amazing. The other the other problem um, that I ran into over there was that uh, none of the the major media would pick it up. None of the newspapers, none of the television stations. Not even the radio stations would do any stories on it, so that's one of the reasons why I started my radio program years ago, is to highlight things that the ma major media was not focusing on. Um, I'm not at all surprised. Uh, you know that um, your president or the president's spokesman mm -hmm. gives a briefing on a regular basis. Right. And uh, there were originally three topics you weren't allowed to ask. One of them was on Cuba, but apparently now you can ask questions on Cuba. Mm -hmm. That's allowed. Mm -hmm. And the other question is on UFOs. If any press man or woman asks a question on UFOs, their news station or newspaper is forbidden for ever coming back to the White House to be part of that briefing. So as a result of that, they don't ask questions. And you'd have to ask, if the official line from major governments around the world mm -hmm. is that UFOs do not exist, right. why would you be frightened of a, of a question on the subject? Well, I, I, I'm, sure you, I'm sure you've heard about this, Simon, but I wanted to share with you a little story, a very interesting interview that President Obama had here in the United States. It was on Jerry Kimmel Live, I believe. When was it? It must have been it either earlier this year or, or late last year where um, Jerry Kimmel is a, a comedian, and he was, they were on NBC, um, a, a radio sta a television station seen throughout the country late night. And Mr. Kimmel asked, jokingly asked um, what President Obama uh, would do. He said, uh, Mr. Kimmel said, well, if I was president, that the first thing I'd, I'd look into is whether UFOs are real. And what President Obama said was very interesting, Simon. What he said was that he, he didn't blink like he usually does, and blinking is an indicative of lying, but he didn't blink this time. He looked straight at him and he said that they're out there, where they keep a very tight rein on us, they control us, they control the entire world, much of the world actually, and they tell us what to say. And he wasn't laughing. Of course, Mr. Kimmel was laughing, but then later uh, Dr. Michael Sala, who's a friend of mine in Hawaii, one of the world's most interesting UFO researchers, did uh, did a, did an analysis uh, with some police detectives of his of his actions and body language during the video, and they all said that he was telling the truth. When President Obama was first elected in the first term of office, mm -hmm. there was a great deal of excitement and speculation, no, no less in 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 the states, right. that the UFO subject was going to be broached. It was going to be uh, spoken about and. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the truth would come out. And I honestly and genuinely believe that President Obama was a good man. Right. And he did really intend to, to break the, the, the silence. But of course, what happens is these good men get into office and then they're just reminded about uh, JFK. They're right. just reminded that if you go too far, you'll end up with a bullet in your head. So a lot of these good intentions just end up nowhere. Right. Uh, and, I, and I note that, um, um, you know, uh, Hillary Clinton... In a, in a fairly recent Hustings talk, as we say in Britain, mm -hmm. she started saying, if I'm president, I'll, um, I'll look into UFOs. So it seems to be that this is a stock um, ploy. Are you there, Simon? Hello, Simon. Are you there? Um, Eric, we seem to have lost Simon there. We'll try to get him, we'll try to get him back on. He's just a truly fascinating man. We're talking about uh, UFOs right now and how um, uh, Hillary Clinton has said that she would look into UFOs if she was elected, but uh, Simon was giving us his comments on that. I hope we can bring him back. Um, we'll see if we can bring him back here. Um, anyway, um, we're interviewing Simon Parks, a famous English politician who's been in contact with extraterrestrials for his entire life, including reptilians, greys, mantis, feline beings. Feline beings are um, part... Um, Lion, part cat, and part human. 
and crystalline Hello, beans. Ted, I can hear you. Oh, good, Simon. I'm, I'm so Ted, glad. Ted, we... I, I don't know what happened there, but I could actually hear you really well. Oh, you good. You just couldn't hear me. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, I know that sometimes when we discuss sensitive subjects on this <laughs> radio program, uh, suddenly our connections are lost or for inexplicably for no reason. But I'm, I'm glad we're back on now, my friend. <laughs> it's good to talk to you again. No, that's fine. That's fine. And yes, um, there are certain topics that uh, some people really don't want aired, and I'm really glad that you air them. So yeah, let's carry on. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, actually, I think with Hillary Clinton, um, I think that's just, I think she's really controlled. Um, even if she wanted to do good things for the country and the world, she would be prevented from doing so by the same entities who control President Obama. So you really have to ask, you know, who who are the players behind these um, these people, um, and and what are, what is their agenda? And I guess that leads me to another question now: Is that your own experience with the reptilians, the greys, the mantis, um, other other um, other life forms beyond this planet, Simon? I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear your uh, your uh, comments on that. Okay. Um, one of the many things people say to me is I appear to be so calm. Mm -hmm. How is it that, you know, I've experienced what I've experienced mm -hmm. and yet I'm so calm about it? And it's a very simple, isn't there's no, nothing special here. It's that I can't remember a time without them. In mm -hmm. other words, from a very small child, mm -hmm. uh, I've seen them. And also I'm very, very lucky that they've never hurt me. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I've never have a reason to, to have have any fear and as I grew up um, mm -hmm. I just realized that uh, that I lived in two worlds mm -hmm. I lived in the world of the everyday life right. and then of course at certain times these things would visit uh, the reptilians the group that I'm familiar with we call them draconis mm -hmm. these are the, the white reptilians with the white skin and the red eyes like albinos basically okay. um, they are quite tall um, they are about six to seven times stronger than an average male Mm -hmm. They are very psychic, and if you, let's say, imagine you have a, uh, a glass of water or a cup of water, and you think, I'm going to go and reach and, you know, just an automatic gesture, pick the glass up, they will know that before your hand actually moves. So mm -hmm. they're incredibly psychic, which makes them very, very um, difficult adversaries. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one, which I call mantid, but you guys refer to as a mantis, mm -hmm. and they're very different. Um, they are a little bit more spiritual. The Draconis don't really have much spirituality, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. But the, um, the uh, Mantis, I'll use, use your, your terminology, mm -hmm. are divided into three groups. The, the lower echelon group, it's a hierarchical structure. The lower echelon group are the doctors, uh, absolutely brilliant physicians. Mm -hmm. The next strata up are the computer operators or the uh, spacecraft uh, uh, operators and then the next group above them are the first group of the officer class for want of a better word and they wear a purple robe with a hood mm -hmm. and that symbolizes their rank um, and this is the character that I referred to as mum uh, so I always call him and it's a male so it's very confusing mm -hmm. uh, I refer to him as mum um, this is what they wanted me to call it mm -hmm. and the draconis reptilian I referred to as dad so the Draconis said, you know, I am your father, and hmm. you call me father. Well, of course, as a five-year-old child, I would have called him daddy. Mm -hmm. So that, of course, is really quite unusual for many situations. Not unique, but, but is unusual. Um, and so these are the two major groups that um, interacted with me from the age of about three mm -hmm. uh, right up to the present day. So it's been an ongoing situation um, and one that um, has been both beneficial in many ways, but also incredibly challenging. I, I bet. My goodness. Um, well, I, I appreciate your insights on this so much. I know that there's been a lot of, um, would, you, would you call the, um, is it Draconis? Is that right, Ray, to pronounce it? Is that right? The yes. Uh, come, yeah, basically they're, they're from the... Uh, the, the, the draconis star system okay. so they they actually they've been there such a long time that they've taken the name and that's why you know we have such a history on this planet of dragons oh. whether it's china or great britain or or america the dragon is a very important symbol and many secret societies take the dragon as their emblem right uh, so that is the history because they are linked very closely and just 
very quickly. Um, if you think about ancient Roman history, uh, the ancient symbol of the Romans was the eagle mm -hmm. on top of its standard. So they, the, the legion, which was the major military unit of the ancient Roman Empire, was the eagle. And then in about 220 AD, for no reason that I can find, they just took away the eagle and replaced it with what's called a, a, a draco. So they actually changed to the dragon standard. And I think somebody very high up in ancient Rome had a very interesting experience and then said to his generals, right, you're going to take off the eagle and you're going to replace it with a dragon. So if you look in history, there are answers, but it's just having the time. We're all so busy to dig back in history and try and right. find those golden nuggets. Right, right. Um, from what from what my own knowledge of uh, human history is, Simon, I'd love your comments on this, is that there's been basically a if you could say like a cold war between um, the Draconis reptilians and the more benevolent entities, a uh, cold war that's been going on for hundreds of thousands of years, and um, the Draconis themselves are oriented towards service to self. Um, and I remember that in, in an interview that we had at my uh, Galactic Wisdom Conference, thank you so much for, for being there, that when I interviewed you about that, you said that the Draconis reptilians think that they've gone as far as they can go in a tele technological sense, and they look actually look at, down at humans because they said that we're developing species. And I think you're right. We, in a way, that they are right. We 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 know we need to evolve certainly, but but um, but they think that they've reached their plateau. Is that correct um, interpretation? Okay, Simon, can you hear us? Uh, we seem to have lost Simon again. Okay, all right. Well, my my uh, my wonderful sound engineer Eric is trying to get him back by Skype again. We've yeah, I'm still there. They obviously don't like the topic, do they? No, I guess not. <laughs> so I'm going to ask it again. Um, uh, <laughs> you had you had mentioned at my Galactic Wisdom Conference, Simon, that that the Draconis reptilians themselves are very technologically advanced, um, but they feel like they've reached a plateau and they actually look down upon us humans as a developing species. Is that? Is that yes. correct? Okay. Can, can you hear me, Ted? I can hear you fine, Simon. Coming Fantastic. through just fine. They, they are really playing a funny game today. Mm -hmm. um, yes. The important thing is that uh, any species that just believes that looking after itself is the most important thing will end up in a uh, evolutionary cul-de-sac. Mm -hmm. And uh, thankfully, there are a number of other alien species that don't follow that line. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, the reptilians are well uh, engaged. They're very closely engaged with a number of um, organizations. The Vatican is one. Mm -hmm. Certainly um, parts of the Pentagon, the White House. Uh, they were very, very controlling in, in what was the old Soviet Union, Russia. Mm -hmm. They've now been kicked out. Excellent. The, rep the reptilians no longer have a say in Russia. Uh, in China, they are half and half so half of the group are reptilian and another half are the the nordic race mm -hmm. so you've got um pockets over the, the the globe where different alien species have an agreement with their local country so mossad the um the intelligence arm of of israel has its own special hotline to an alien group and you mm -hmm. find that those countries that have that connection their technology is much higher than those countries that don't have a connection i see Fascinating. Now, in China, you mentioned that the um, the government is controlled half by the reptilians and half by the Nordics. Are those the, are they beneficial? Are they benevolent Nordics, or are they totalit Are they uh, more of a negative oriented uh, race? And the, the the Nordics are the natural enemies of the reptilians. I see. Uh, you will never find a, a spacecraft that contains both Nordics and reptilians on, or there'll be no bases. Uh, where those two races work together hand in hand because mm -hmm. they are enemies. So basically what's happening in China is that the Chinese government are playing one off against the other to see which deal they can get with the best. Isn't that a dangerous game for them? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's pretty dangerous. Um, you know, when you are dealing with um, people whose technology is many hundreds of years ahead of yours, right. um, it is very difficult and very stupid to to do that because ultimately um, you're going to get caught out in the end. But you know the Chinese are on a mission to dominate the world through through the economy. I mean they already have one third of the world's gold. Amazing. That's not widely widely known. So 
they're ready to launch their yen, their currency, and that right. will be gold backed. Right. So they are, in a way, I suppose, in a very strong position with off planet races because both China and India are going to be the two powerhouses in the next 10 years on this planet. Mm -hmm. China's already on the way and it's going down because they've poisoned their country right. uh, in order to get this huge economic growth. So India grew by 9% last year. It was the mm. fastest growing country on the planet. Wow. So, you know, things change, but um, if you play a game th that they play, then uh, it's not what I would recommend. Right. Well, isn't China, in a way, going down the same road as the reptilians, in a way of an evolutionary cul-de-sac, where they're putting so much emphasis on material wealth without accompanying spiritual development, that they're going to end up, they could end up po po poisoning and polluting their country uh, beyond habitability? I mean, they could end up killing themselves from all the pollution? Ted, you, 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 you're absolutely spot on. You've hit the nail on the head, as mm -hmm. we say in Great Britain. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. I mean, Thanks. you know, what, what has, what's China been doing recently? It's been um, sending super tankers to get water from Lake Erie. Oh, my God. Um, because they haven't got any decent water to drink in their major cities. So I understand that, that mm -hmm. the water's gone down some I mean, like 15 feet in the last few years. There's yeah. so many uh, billions of gallons of water because they've poisoned their own water. Well, that is a very reptilian thing in the sense that, um, you know, you, you don't, you turn your back on the ecology, you forget about right. the planet, you forget right. about the animals. Well, right. you know, that, that's going to come back and bite you. And one of the problems in China, of course, is that they've gone after spiritual groups like the Falun Gong. Many Tibetan, uh, Tibetan yes. priests and monks have been murdered by the Chinese government. And it's like they're afraid of any kind of spirituality or any kind of higher spiritual advancement. Well, you, again, you, you're right on. What what used to happen in the 1970s was that the Chinese government would um, put the monks into prison. But the next morning, the guards would come in and find that the monks were no longer in the prison cell, but were actually outside in the courtyard. And they couldn't understand how the monks were able to escape from their prison. Right. Um, and it got to the point where they stopped doing it and they either put them under house arrest or murdered them mm -hmm. because anybody who has the ability to pass through a prison wall is clearly very, very spiritual and has transcended beyond the, the, the sort of physical that we understand. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why the Chinese are so fearful of the Dalai Lama uh, or any of the other uh, spiritual monks because they have reached a level of learning that does not bring into account money or material gain you know monks don't have cell phones unless they are you know doing their uh, connecting work but generally speaking if you detach from materialistic world mm -hmm. you then develop your spiritual world now we can't do that we're in a you know we're in a, in a world where we have to survive we have to to pay our bills and we have to have food right. but it, it it's it's changing the last five, six, seven years, more and more people are questioning the lifestyle that they're in right. and are seeking and seeking answers. So although things look bad, actually, I'm, I'm very positive about the future. Well, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. One of the predictions, I've been, I've been a psychic for 22 years, and I have been very fortunate to be in touch with uh, Nostradamus of, of, all, of all spirits on the other side. He says China will change and eventually become a democracy. Um, and I and I know that's going to happen because the, the entire planet actually is slated for ascension, and we are rising. Um, our the entire planet's vibrations are getting higher by the day. I totally agree with you, absolutely. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't have any time for these do, what we call doom and gloom merchants here I in don't. Great Britain. Um, you know, because if you believe in that, you'll create it. It's mm -hmm. like when I I did a conference a couple of years back, mm -hmm. and um, a gentleman approached me. Um, uh, who I believe to be from the Knights Templars. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said um, he'd been sent to me. Uh, he, his employers had decided that they'd listened to what I'd said and believed mm -hmm. that it was truth. Mm -hmm. And that I was, and I quote, a sacred object and needed to be protected. And he offered me uh, bodyguards and armored cars. And he said, um, there is a, a, mm -hmm. a, a nuclear bunker for you uh, in Great Britain, for you and your loved ones, mm -hmm. should you need to go there. The thing is, I, I didn't accept the nuclear bunker because 
if you believe in that, you'll bring it on. That's true. Uh, but I am quite, I'm quite taken with the armored cars. I quite, I quite like the <laughs> idea of going shopping to the mall in, a, in an armored car. But uh, what he meant and offered was genuine. But mm -hmm. I will not buy into that because mm -hmm. I want human people to actually have freedom and happiness and not to have to hide underground with bombs dropping on their head. I have um, a lot of friends off-planet in the Galactic Alliance, and they're a benevolent group uh, of 450 million planets in this one-third of the Milky Way gal galaxy, and I, I know I have their protection and they've got my back. So uh, for many light workers around the world, we are being protected. Um, there's only one place I would not recommend going, and that's China at the present time. I think things will change in the future, but I don't think it's safe for for people who are doing spiritual work. Yes, I, I, I agree, and that's why I made a big point about the uh, monks, mm -hmm. and they are murdered or, or house arrest um, right. because because the, the Chinese government is, is between two factions. That's what's happening. You know, there's an old saying here in the United States, Simon, I'm sure you've heard about it, but uh, when you play with fire, you've got to be careful because you can get burned, and this yeah. is exactly what the Chinese are doing right now. Um, they're sacrificing everything for the material god, which is uh, an evolutionary cul-de-sac because they can only go so far with it before they completely foul their nest and pollute their country beyond the point where the Chinese people won't be able to live there. Well, let's take that further. That's why the Chinese have been buying up huge amounts of land in Africa mm -hmm. and South America because mm -hmm. they, uh, as incredible as it seems, they have a fallback plan to literally relocate millions of people uh, to other countries, um, and that is why they buy so much real estate. Huh. Amazing. That's just amazing. Just amazing. Um, I wanted to ask you about our own government here, the United States government. What kinds of... I, I'm familiar with Eisenhower's um, illegal treaty he signed with the Greys and the Reptilians back in 1954. I believe it was called the Treaty of Merida. I'm not, I'm not sure of the name. Uh, whereby, uh, in exchange for some of their advanced technology to, to fight the then Soviet Union in the Cold War that they would be allowed to abduct and study us, uh, study humans. Um, do you know much about the current situation here in the United States? Yeah, um, I, I, I think we touched on this before, and, and mm -hmm. I just have to get, put my, my opinion. My opinion is it wasn't mm -hmm. 1954. Okay. My opinion, it was 1950. Oh, that's right, 1950. I'm sorry, but, yes. Mm -hmm. But there was a meeting in 54 okay. because the president said that the Greys were not holding to the agreement. And he called a meeting to say that um, he had been informed that people were being abducted and their names were not being passed on. And they were the Greys were taking people above the quota. Mm -hmm. And so he attempted to hold the Greys to the written contract, the contract that had been made. Mm -hmm. And basically... Um, the aliens just gave the president the finger. Oh. And from that point onwards, mm -hmm. uh, the, the human government was in no doubt that, that this particular alien race um, was just trying to trick them. And mm -hmm. that was the point that there was a mass rush to back engineer, to use alien technology, to try to bring the United States quite correctly, actually, in my opinion, as close to defending itself as it could because... If you have a bow and arrow and the other guy has got a, a semi-automatic weapon, you, right. can't, you can't negotiate. So what, what quite rightly what the president had to do was to uh, rush a program through so that the American people could be some sort of defense. And, and they did remarkably well. And the ultimate part, of course, was uh, Ronald Reagan's Star Wars. Right. Um, and that's interesting because the physical technology for Star Wars existed – what didn't exist until till the, the, the late 70s, early 80s was mm -hmm. the software to run it. Mm. Um, if you are an alien spacecraft and you mm -hmm. are circling the Earth mm -hmm. and a human radar locks onto you, mm -hmm. you will detect uh, not the radar lock so mm -hmm. much, but mm -hmm. the, the minds of the people in the control room. Now, this mm -hmm. is what was happening. That's why they couldn't be shot down. And then the Americans relocated all the, the human operators may be two, three, four hundred miles away from where the weapon was. Mm -hmm. So when the weapon fired, the, um, the crew of the alien spacecraft had no connection, couldn't pick up any human activity. Oh. And then that's when they began 
began to get some successes. Um, and one of the, the you you have a you know, weapon uh, which I think came from the Vietnam War. It's a, a mortar called Davy Crockett. Davy Crockett. I think that's the nickname for this mortar. Uh -huh. And it fires uh, a weapon that creates an, an electromagnetic pulse. Mm -hmm. Now, what what the Americans and the Brits found was that when you detonate a, a weapon that creates an EMP pulse, mm -hmm. for about seven to eight seconds, mm -hmm. the force field around an alien spacecraft comes down as it recalibrates. Mm -hmm. So that was the window of opportunity for um, them to be taken out by missiles. So a number of grey spacecraft in the 1980s were brought down mm -hmm. uh, through that method. So it, it, it's, it's, it's cat and mouse. They, they, they create a, a new defense and then the humans back engineer some more technology and catch up and that's what's been going on. So basically when, when the aliens gave, I think it was Ike, the finger, um, mm -hmm. that was it. All the bets were off. And of course it all goes back to your very, very famous Roswell crash. Oh, that's right. That's right. I've, I've been in touch with the Galactic Alliance now for the past two years, and they tell me that they, they are working behind the scenes to turn things around here on the planet. Um, and, um, and I know that they're there, and I know that uh, a lot of light workers, for example, are, are, getting, are getting the help and protection they need. Um, and I also know, too, that uh, worldwide the reptilians have implanted so many people with what, what they call negative implants um, to make people think in a negative way to feed off the negativity, but those are being... Are, t are being removed as well, so we can have our, our free will back. Um, with the bottom line is that I think the, the future for humanity on this planet is very, very bright. I don't see a, a, a third world war. Uh, wh what do you see, Simon? I don't see a third world war, but I do see, um, I do see issues between countries mm -hmm. um, that could relate, could develop in some sort of conflict. Mm -hmm. I think from the United States point of view, mm -hmm. I can see some states um, getting potentially close to um, conflict with, with the federal side. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you've got six of your own states now that have petitioned to, to leave the union. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got two states that have formally written to President Obama demanding their gold back. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the, the Texans want to produce their own currency and be sure. gold backed sure. so um there are there are going to be issues but there's going to be no calamitous end there's going to be no end of the world but there will be issues coming up from time to time yes interesting interesting um regarding our presidential election here this year uh what kinds of things do you see from from your perspective um it is a very interesting um, hillary clinton represents the steady as she goes um, mindset, which is, look, it's working. We've got all the, the, the citizens, they're mm -hmm. all slaves, they're all working away. Mm -hmm. Keep the situation like that. We can go on for another 20 years. Mm -hmm. Then you've got those who, who back Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And that is, by and large, the military uh, industrial complex. Mm -hmm. And they've got to a point now where they want to push the issue. Mm -hmm. um, they're basically saying, um, we've got to do something. Um, this is the man to do it. And, and I actually you know, think of Donald Trump as, as a, a Mr. Ronald Reagan uh, on steroids. <laughs> he, he, he will um, do things mm -hmm. and enact into law things that no other president would dream of doing. So uh, yeah. on the timeline I'm looking, as it stands at the moment, um, Mr. Trump will be your next president. Interesting. Uh, um, mm -hmm. You know, it depends on the FBI. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got something like, 14 days left before the FBI have to decide whether they're going to uh, arrest Hillary Clinton mm -hmm. for the 200 emails. Mm -hmm. um, but they won't do it unless Joe, Joe Biden uh, is prepared to stand as the Democratic nominee in place of Hillary Clinton. So it, never mind justice. This is all about deals being done behind doors sure. uh, to see what happens. But as it stands at the moment... Incredible as it may be to many of your listeners, um, Mr. Trump is online to be president as it stands at the moment. Interesting. Interesting. I had a gentleman from the um, Hollow Earth on my show uh, about three or four weeks ago, Simon, uh, okay. and he said that this would not be in a normal election year. He wouldn't elaborate. Uh, but uh, there's been a lot of speculation from that statement, including uh, that Hillary may be indicted. I don't know. I, you know, I, I just... Well, I, I, I can honestly 
tell you and the listeners mm -hmm. that the dossier is on the desk of the head of the FBI mm -hmm. and that keeps being put into the third drawer down on the right. Oh, I shouldn't be doing this, but I'll tell you, the third drawer down on the right of this person's desk and comes out again, sits on the top. The person thumbs the pages and thinks, oh, goodness, what am I going to do with this? And it goes back down again. But the time is ticking mm -hmm. and a decision has to be made. Now, I really don't know. I honestly can't see the future here with that. Right. But, but certainly your election is in November. Mm -hmm. If Mr. Trump wins the election in November, you will have three states within six weeks of his election demanding to leave the union. Which states uh, do you see those? Texas uh, probably one of them? California, Texas, and possibly Ohio. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, we're getting close. This hour has gone so fast, uh, Simon. We've got about uh, six, seven minutes left, and I wanted to ask you, if you don't mind, a little bit about uh, the royal families. I know you probably know about David Icke, and he's been on my show before. Uh, yes. Prince Princess Diana actually uh, called the royal family in, in Britain the lizard people. Um, is, is there any credence to that, uh, that they actually are not entirely human? Yes, I have the highest regard for David Icke. David Icke came onto the planet to um, be like a snowplow, to mm -hmm. be the person who went through the virgin snow to make a path. Wow. Uh, and, of course, he was attacked left, right, and center. Sure. Um, as far as I'm concerned, Diana was murdered, mm -hmm. murdered by elite people mm -hmm. because she was pregnant with Dodie's child. That's oh. why her body was embalmed, oh. so that there would be no um, evidence of that. Mm -hmm. um, yes, there's a difference. I know we haven't got much time. There's a difference between a person who has a reptilian soul, mm -hmm. and I have one third of my soul is reptilian. There's mm -hmm. a difference between that mm -hmm. and when what I call an overlay. If you take a, a person and then the uh, entity actually overlays itself over that person and and takes control of them right. and these are these are not really human people at all mm -hmm. and their soul is 100 percent reptilian but their physical body also contains huge reptilian genetics now diana on a number of occasions saw people change shape wow. she saw that and many others and and many bodyguards saw that and i'd say to your listeners um if they do the research they'll find it um, Hillary Clinton's number one bodyguard, who was a Navy SEAL, mm -hmm. uh, died. And uh, the, the official news is he died in his training camp. Uh, he didn't. Uh, he was shot dead by other bodyguards because he was trying to shoot Hillary Clinton. And this is, goes back two or three years ago when Hillary Clinton was on a special mission to Iran mm -hmm. um, to, to meet the president uh, of Iran. And the head of the SEAL bodyguard had seen Hillary change into something which he didn't like and decided that <laughs> this was something not of this planet, uh, shot her. And if you your listeners look in the news, they'll see that uh, it was reported that she'd had an accident either in the Senate or the Congress. She'd fallen oh, and hurt herself. that's right. And she was that. off. Well, that was actually a gunshot wound from oh. a, a Heckler and Koch 9mm uh, weapon, I think, or 7.62mm weapon. But um, anyway, there's a long story on that. So, But this is basically where uh, he had seen the overlay change, and uh, this is what Princess Diana referred to as the lizard people. Did she so I hope, that, I hope that's helpful. Oh, it's fascinating. Actually, I've gotten the same, uh, the same inf similar information from psychic friends of mine who I meet with regularly, we go out for a cup of coffee and we talk about all kinds of things because we were in touch with spirits on the other side. That's and, good. That's great. <laughs> and last weekend, after um, uh, we, we had drank some coffee, and uh, uh, this this friend of mine started channeling, and she said that uh, Hillary Clinton has a lot of reptilian energies in, in her itself, and she's not, not completely human. It looks human, but it's not. Well, as these people get older... The, the visage, the face breaks down. And if you looked at the outgoing Pope, one of the reasons he had to go wasn't mm -hmm. because there was a court case coming up against him, mm -hmm. was because the genetics were breaking down and they become more and more what they really are until the, the mask is just slipping off their face and they have to be replaced. So this is the last chance for Hillary to be president because after this, the genetics will break down to such an extent that nobody would be able to be in the same room as her. I see. I see. So she'll have uh, red eyes, then the scaly skin. She won't have red eyes, I don't think, because uh -huh. um, she she's not 
uh, of that line. Mm -hmm. Remember, there are more than one form of uh, reptilian. There are several different groups of reptilian. Um, they're not all of the same line, um, but they would all um, have signed the same deal. So the, the group, the group of reptilians under the Vatican, are the same group that are under under the White House. Interesting, interesting. Uh, Simon, I just wanted to say quickly. Um, uh, for those who turn in, to, who just tuned in, this is Ted Marr of uh, Out of This World Radio. I'm having a fascinating interview with Simon Parks live, coming to us live by Skype from England. Uh, Simon, we've got about a minute and a half left, and I wanted to give you the time, my friend, to to talk about anything you like. And I want to thank you so much for coming on today. Well, I want to thank you, Ted, because you're a good man, and oh, we need all the good people that we can get. Good people need to work together. So my message is to the American people. I know, I know your radio station goes everywhere, but this is to the American people. Yeah, you have a wonderful country. You are wonderful people. Uh, never forget who you are. Never forget the fact that you have a right to live unmolested, um, and you need to be strong and look after yourselves and your family, and don't let... Uh, elite people push you around. So that's what I want to say to the American people. I've been in touch with, uh, very fortunate, I've been in touch with President uh, John F. Kennedy, and I'll be having a special program a week from today, actually, for the 4th of July holiday, with channeling messages from him, along with other great spirits as well. Um, anyway, Simon, and we'll be, I'll be having, we'll be interviewing you tomorrow for my television program. And Simon, I want to thank you so much for coming on today, my friend. I hope you have a wonderful day.